All right, Utah State is uh, here. And we will open with the opening comment from Coach Sprinkle, and then we'll go to the anybody up here in the day. So go ahead, Coach. Yeah. Uh, you know, first thing, super proud of my team. Um, I mean, the season we had, I mean, it, it was historic for, for Utah State to win 28 games in outright Mountain West Championship, to win a game in the NCAA tournament against a tough Big 12 team. Um, you know, couldn't be more proud of our guys. You know, Darius, obviously, you know, senior leader, our other you know, senior Landon Brenchley for what they did from a leadership standpoint, bringing 13 brand new players together uh, was absolutely incredible. Shows what kind of character our team has. Um, tonight just ran into a buzzsaw. You know, I mean, we knew, we knew they were really good. Um, you know, I think there's elite teams and there's special teams and like they, they, they can be special. Um, when you have a player, you know, like Zach Eady, who's He's special. Like there hasn't been many guys like that in college basketball history, and so, you know, that's why I think they they can just take it to another level. Um, you know, and we told our guys even before, like, yeah, Zach Eady's obviously a national player of the year. They got other really really good players, and uh, you know they can't go unnoticed. You know, I thought it seemed like they made every three pointer and every even mid range jump shot um, tonight, which you have to make them make some of those, and if they do. You know, you just got to pat them on the butt and say congrats. Um, but couldn't be more proud of our team. And, you know, it was just it was one of those games. We ran into a buzzsaw, but it doesn't take away what we accomplished this year. Right here. Uh, Danny Steve Streaming, XL, uh, XL8 Sports. Watched a lot of Mountain West basketball. This, can, this cannot define your team because you guys won that championship. And there are six teams playing in this, in this tournament. Talk a little bit about your team and what you think you guys accomplished this year, and especially Darius, because he scored some baskets late, but he's an elite guard. He is, you know, what, what, I mean, what our team did this year was historic. You know, I don't know if it'll be done again at the, at the power five, power six level. You know, when you're playing Mount West, Big Ten, like, it's hard to do with a completely brand new roster. You know, was there some luck involved? No question, uh, but, when you have a leader like Darius, who literally just put guys on his shoulders and showed them the way, and as a point guard, he was just an, he was an extension of, of our coaching staff and from the summer on. And he deserves more credit than anybody because what he did with this uh, pretty young group and to build confidence in those guys by being a true point guard and like getting those guys shots, it made our whole team better. It made everybody more confident. And like I said, there's some tremendous point guards in the Mount West, you know, guys that'll play in the NBA. And don't be surprised if this kid does. You know, he has intangibles and he has elite skills that not many players do nowadays. And that's being more for a point guard, you know, being there for a teammate, getting guys shots. Like he would rather do that than shoot. And he's made so many of our guys, you know, so much better and more confident throughout the year. And, uh, you know, he's, he's elite, you know, for him to do that in our league, like I said, with the point guards in our league, there was only one that led their team to an outright championship, and that's him. And that's an unbelievable accomplishment. Right back here. Jack Johnson, the Utah Statesman. Um, what are your thoughts on those four quick fouls at the beginning of the game on uh, Sacco and Johnson? Yeah, you know, I mean, it's hard. Like, he's, <laughs> he's hard to guard without fouling, you know? I mean, they, they've shot almost 400 more free throws than their opponents this year for a reason. You know, and that's why I was saying, like, he's a special player. He, you, have to, you have to guard completely different than you have all year. Like, there's post guys that you play against that you have to double team and do all this, but, like, he, it's impossible when he keeps it high and he's got great touch and he's finding guys and they got elite shooters around him. I mean, it's, it's kind of pick your poison and you have to hope they miss shots and then you got to be able to rebound it. You know, and I thought that's kind of when the game started breaking open was when they started getting some second chance points. But, I mean, not, the refs were great. Like, yeah, I mean, we, yeah, we probably fouled them. Right here. Uh, Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal. Coach, did you think about calling a timeout during that run? When they, I know you like to let the guys kind of play it out, but when they started getting some momentum and the crowd got into it, did, it, did you think about a timeout at all during that? Yeah, we did. Time? We did um, at one point, you know, in the first half. And it got, it was when they kind of, it was that one four-minute span, they outscored us by 11. And it was just, it was bad offense on our part. You know, we were pretty good the first, I don't know, 
12, 13, 12 minutes maybe of, of offense. It was a pretty close game. And then we kind of got a little selfish and we started going one on one and a couple turnovers, a couple just driving into multiple bodies and, you know, missing layups. And then if you fall down, they're transitioning. And that's where the game kind of got out of hand there. Right back, right over here. Jason Walker with Cash Valley Daily. Uh, Coach, how much do those fouls like impact maybe even your offense, just your rotation in general, where a lot of guys had to take a seat on the bench and it kind of threw you guys off and then, you know, obviously pretty went on a run late in the half as you guys were picking up more and more fouls? Yeah, I mean, it does. It throws off your rotations and it's hard. Like, we don't have enough big bodies to keep throwing at, at Edie. You know, like Carson and Great, you know, those are the two really that have some meat on their bones that can kind of. Now, it's not like you're going to move him, but at least you can hold your ground a little bit. Um, you know, but they got, you know, obviously when Khalifa got in, they just scored six straight points, you know, on offensive putbacks and not boxing out and things like that, which, you know, affected us early. But, you know, like I said, it's you can game plan all you want, but then you got to go play the game. And it comes down to I thought they had great pace. They were aggressive. Even off their DHOs, their guards were really pushing the ball downhill. And now you have Edie rolling. And now we got a 6'2", 180-pound guy tagging on the roll. It's different. Right here. Call McMahon, who's your network? Darius, what did it mean to you to make this transition from Montana State to Utah State with Coach Sprinkle, you know, make back-to-back -back NCAA tournaments with two different schools, and then get your first NCAA tournament win this year? Darius? Uh, yeah, it, it was special. You know, these past two years with Coach Sprinkle have been, a, uh, have, have been special and very – essential to my future and I, I can't thank him and the staff enough for what they've done for me. Um, the transition from uh, the you know Montana State to the Utah State was it was definitely a transition more of the just because of the whole new roster and everything but I mean I, I felt my whole career that I could play at a high level and play in a, in a really good conference and it took some time for me to move up you know due to opportunities and all different types of things, but I, I've always felt I could play at this level, and I'm glad that for my last year I got an opportunity to play at, at a in a very high level conference like the Mountain West Conference and show what I can do. So, right over here, uh, Sean Harrison with the Herald Journal again. Ian, can you talk a little bit about that first half when you had it seemed like you really got going those back to back threes, and I think you scored 11 straight points for the team. Ian, um, yeah, throughout the season I felt like you know at times where I saw just one. One basket going in, I just kind of get going. You know, I've told my teammates or coaches, you know, I kind of just need one shot to go in to start moving, you know, to get hot. So that's basically what happened. It happened a couple of times before in the season, New Mexico, UNLB, 12 points, 10 points in a row. Right here. For the players, you know, Coach talked about how, just how remarkable the season was. I guess could just both the players just talk about what it means for you guys to be part of this team, how unique it was to have the success you did given the circumstances you guys were in. Ian, we'll start with you. No, for me it's really special. I mean, just in my personal journey, you know, it's been really tough. I've been in a lot of different places, and, and you know, it's an international. A lot of times I just look for a place to call home and this guys, just the coaching staff, the players, they just made it really special for me. They they took me, they, you know, um, they were there for me the, the whole time. They believed in me, and I, you know, never had people who actually believed in me, and it, it meant a lot for me. Darius? Uh, yeah, to me, I mean, everything just, you know, feels kind of like a storybook ending. Um, starting from two years ago when I, uh, when I broke my knee at Cal State Northridge and had to sit out the whole year and then making that grad transfer to Montana State, and then kind of going into it like a completely different situation as far as the whole team was kind of already there. And I was just, you know, me and two other guys were the transfers. So dealing with, you know, a team that's already been there and then dealing, you know, with that. And then, you know, the next year it's the complete opposite where I'm the one that has the most familiarity with the coaching staff and it's a brand new, team and then still able to to do great things and win an outright title and win a, t a tournament game and just all the ups and downs of the year like it it just seems you know to me in my college career just a storybook ending obviously you know we would have liked to keep going as long as we can uh, as long as we could but you know when you run into a team like Purdue and you know they they have a they have a guy like Zach Eady and then when the guys around them are making shots it's like there, there's only so much you can do so we have time for a couple more 
right here. I don't know if you want to share Darius, but it seemed like you and Coach had a really long talk when you when he checked, when he pulled you out of the game. Did you share anything that the Coach said to you that during that moment? Uh, ju you know, just that he's proud of me, and that um, it's been a long, great year. It's been a long, great year. And the short version of the story. So. Super thankful. Well, I know the reason this team is here and won an outright championship is because he made a decision to come to Utah State and. Like, I can't speak more highly of the person he is and how much he means to me personally, but this team, our staff, and I know, like I said, he's a, he's a legend now in Utah State basketball with the way he played this year and some of the shots he hit. Last, last question. Coach Sprinkle, you mentioned how special and historic this season was for your team. Looking off the court, what do you think made this, this season possible for you guys? The way our guys came together, you know, you could, you know, you could see in the summer, you know, some of the local guys, you know, Mason and Isaac and Landon, you know, bringing the team to their house, you know, or their, even their parents' houses and having barbecues and them showing them around Cache Valley, going up to Bear Lake, you know, and the, the camaraderie that that built in the summer, uh, it translated to the court. And then we coached them pretty hard, you know, like we put them through some hard stuff, you know, even in the summer and in the fall. You know, even trying to break a couple of guys, you know, just to kind of see what they were made of and made them rely on their teammates, you know, to be there for each other. And the first time I really saw it was in the Cayman Islands when I saw how close this team was, you know, and the way they just by their interaction, whether it was walking in the hotel or at pregame meals and you could see there was something special there. Now, I never would have told you we'd win an outright championship in the Mountain West, but you could see that this group had something and they cared about each other. Thank you, Coach. Good luck, Ted. Thank yeah. you.